Good morning. This is Dina Marie with Matra Day Radio. Along with graduations, Mother's Day, and Memorial Day celebrations, the month of May is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. And this summer, the theme for the 49th Annual Catholic Education Retreat at Our Lady of Peace Retreat is Mystical Union with Mary. Retreatants are invited to come and stay at the Retreat House in July from the 10th through the 15th to nourish their hearts with peace and quiet, nourish their minds with engagement engaging Catholic conferences, and nourish their bodies with the wonderful hospitality of the sisters. With me today to talk about her involvement in this year's Summer Institute is Sister Teresa of the Society of Mary. Good morning, Sister Teresa. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Well, we are really looking forward to this opportunity for retreat in July with the sisters, and I'd love to hear a little bit about your vocation story and just really what led you to discern religious life and coming into the Society of Mary. Well, I'm a convert to Catholicism, so it wasn't a question for me. You know, maybe I think girls who grow up in the Catholic church and a Catholic family have that possibility in their mind. Um, I entered the church right after graduate school at OSU. And it wasn't something I was considering at all, but people would ask me, like, have you thought about religious life? And I would say, no, no, not interested. Um, and I really wasn't interested. But as people asked the question, that kind of became annoying to me, because there was this little voice in the back of my mind that I was trying to shut up, you know. Um, and I remember there was this one professor, and he would pray every week in the mass on campus, he would pray for religious vocations from our community and I always kind of felt irritated at him so that was obviously the Lord was doing something but I wasn't really listening or knowing how to listen um and I experienced an attraction to consecrated life really when the St. John Society came to Corvallis it was the summer of 2005 and I was living there I was working at the Newman Center as a lay person and I just remember being inspired by their their love for Jesus their normality their their desire to win souls um, the way they weren't ashamed to speak about Christ, to evangelize. And so from the beginning, I was really drawn to their ministry and what they did. I didn't know it was possible. I didn't know that there were women doing the same thing. So I wasn't thinking about a religious vocation. I just thought, I really love doing this. Um, at the same time, I experienced that the Lord was calling me to take a step. And I thought it was to, to quit working at the Newman Center and go on to graduate school so I could work at the Newman Center full-time with a theology degree. Um, and but I, I had been holding on. So I was holding on to the work in the Newman Center. I was holding on to a, a kind of a relationship with a guy that I, I really liked. And just kind of the desire for my life, like what I wanted for my life. And so I was putting him off. I kept putting off that decision about going on to graduate school. And um, then there was this. So so then St. John's Society came in July of that year. And I remember just being impressed by them from the beginning. And in November, their their two founding priests came up. And one of them told me he um, would like to speak with me because I worked with the, the St. John Society men. And then the conversation didn't happen. So at the end of the visit, he said, well, I didn't have a chance to speak with you personally, but I want you to know if you ever want to come to Argentina, there's a place for you. Mm. So I was like, well, that was really nice. I thought he was saying, hey, yeah, if you're ever in town, look us up. You know, like something that wouldn't happen. Um, but then I started to think about that, like imagining going to Argentina and seeing all these cool Argentinian cultural things like the tango, you know, just all the things you have in your mind and missioning. And as I imagined it, it became more and more just evangelizing, doing the mission of evangelization. So in that, in the, after that visit, various things happened. The relationship I was in ended and the, my, the, my supervisor at the time at Newman said there wasn't money in the budget for my bigger salary I was part-time and and I remember when that happened the Lord I was just it was clear the Lord wanted me to start listening to him and so I said don't worry he has something else for me I, um, and I started going to adoration every day and just saying I don't know obviously I don't know how to hear you so just speak to me like just make it clear because I'm not good at this and one day I was just looking at him there in the blessed sacrament and I um this was overcome by how much he loved me. And I had just a realization, like, you love me completely, Lord. You, you hold nothing back. You give me your whole life, your whole heart, every single day in communion. And I'm giving you part of my life and part of my heart. So I want to love you like you love me, but I don't know how, so tell me how. And what I heard in my heart was, give me your desire to get married. And so I had a struggle. I, I, I feel like 
a very long struggle. I have no idea how long it was until I just said, okay, take it. And when I said, take it, when I surrendered, I felt this deep joy and this peace, some fear, of course, too, but this deep joy and peace um, at the College of the Vocation. So then, of course, that was tested and I had to discern it more deeply in spiritual direction, but that was it. And there was never a question for me of where, because the, my vocation was awakened by the apostle of the St. John Society. So when I found out there were women who were just beginning in Argentina too, doing the same thing or a similar thing, it was really clear to me that that was, that was my vocation. It was a call to serve the Lord and the Society of Mary in the work of the new evangelization. Hmm. To be completely his so I could be for others. Yes. Yeah. What a great thing to hear, sister. The seeds have been planted. And then that invitation. Well, if you think about coming to Argentina, and then I imagine you did so, you were able to go and spend time in Argentina, right? Right. So then after about um, a year of discernment, my first mission trip was to Mexico, it was to leave in Mexico. And that's where the Lord really confirmed my vocation. And then the following year, I was able to go for seven weeks to Argentina for an experience came back for a few months and then went and I lived there for several years, actually. So my beginning, I entered the Society of Mary in Argentina. We weren't in the, in the States yet. There was one house in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what a great lesson about adoration, sister, that spending that quiet time listening, not talking, not saying all of these things to the Lord, but also that word surrender that you mentioned. And I know archbishops mentioned that surrender novena, so much of Jesus, I surrender it to you. Right. Right. Because he knows what he created us for. Yeah. And yeah. you said yes. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful. And I can just see the joy um, in the hearts of Jesus and Mary because of that. Yes. Sister Teresa is with us. She's going to be one of several speakers at the retreat at Our Lady of Peace in July. Actually, it's a summer institute, a full week, and we're looking forward to having her come and the Society of Mary being present. If you could describe a little bit, since the community has grown and it's such a new community, it's so beautiful. Just describe a little bit about some of the different activities that you do here within the Archdiocese of Portland? So we have, we're kind of all over the place. One of our sisters is currently serving at the OSU Newman Center, in the campus ministry there. So she goes down from our house in West Flynn a few days a week um, and other apostolic endeavors in Corvallis area. I serve at St. Michael the Archangel in downtown Portland, um, liturgy coordinator, but I do many things, work with our mercy missionaries and our various programs of evangelization, um, and also on the pastoral council for the archbishop. And then all of the sisters have some role in our San Juan Diego program, which is for the Hispanic community. And we just had our congreso with them, which is a gathering of all the communities with there were 1,500 people there. So that was a huge, beautiful event, um, the fruit of many years of work and sewing. And then several of us are teaching theology at Central Catholic, actually, this year. They had a teacher quit, and so we got called in to be like permanent subs for the rest of the year. And then we recently opened the Old River Pastoral Center for the new evangelization in Westland, Oregon. And that's where we sisters are residing. Um, it's a Saint, it's a, an apostle of the St. John Society, which we share with them. And there we have Sunday Masses and the high school program, which is the first time we're doing it in the States, an outreach program for high school students called Synaculo. And we had the first retreat for them in Holy Week. And there's about 20, 20 some students, I think, participating each week in the weekly meeting. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's the bulk of what we're that's doing. That's just a little bit. And there's so much. It's so beautiful. And I love the mission of evangelization and really reaching into the heart and bringing those relationships together in community, but most importantly, the relationship with Jesus Christ. Sister Teresa, I want to ask you more about your uh, talks because they're going to be surrounded about Mary. Will you stay with me? We're coming up to a break, but we'll uh, get back on the other side of the break and continue our conversation. Of course. 